are with us regularly, you know we host as many of our South Florida lawmakers as possible to hear from them, examine their positions and their votes for you, especially on the more controversial bills percolating through the process this week. With us today, two South Florida state reps from either side of the aisle who cast opposing votes this week on several big bills. Marie Woodson, Democrat representing Southwest Broward's communities. Fabian Basabe is a Republican repping coastal communities from Golden Beach to South Beach. And it is so great to have you both with us. Good morning, great to be here. Thanks happy. and happy Good morning, Easter. Glenna. Good morning. So Thanks for having us. Of course. So last segment, we were talking to Senator Lauren Book about the abortion bill. I, I just want to start with that since for it's a nice segue. It passed the Senate and it is headed right toward you in the House. Um, how will you vote on that? Let's start with uh, let's start with tenure. Rep Woodson, how will you vote on that bill? Good morning, Glenna. Happy Easter to everyone who celebrate and happy Passover to those who celebrate Passover. Um, this bill, Glenna, I voted against the bill. And I voted for a lot of reasons, which we are going to get into very soon. And uh, Rep. Masabe, I'm I'm uh, Fabian. Can we go first names here? It's just a lot easier for everybody, right. and since we mm -hmm. all know each other, um, so when it gets to the House in the Senate, two of your uh, Republican colleagues did vote no. One being Alexis Kaladiud from Miami, uh, voted against part, what would be party lines. How will you vote on this abortion bill, and why? So I agree with Senator Book um, that this is a lot of politics because. I think, and, and Rep. Woodson, you might um, agree, no no Republican or no member of the majority, or for the House that matters, spent more time with Planned Parenthood and worked harder on this to give women a choice because it's what I campaigned on. I believe in respectful choices. I went to Planned Parenthood and they, they came to me with a proposal of the numbers actually, that the majority of abortions in the history of Florida have been in the first trimester only Less than 3% happen after that trimester, and those are usually in the exceptions category. They had some exceptions that were not obstacles. They were very reasonable. I took this proposal to different members on the Democrat side, including the minority leader. I tried to get them to kind of work with us. In order to get anything done, in order to show respect for life, in order to accomplish anything, we have to work together and come to some respectful middle ground. How, do you, how are you going to vote on this? That's, that's to be seen on the floor because I still have a lot to say on this subject. I am not happy with where we're at. I okay. believe in respectful choices. I respect women. I, I am, I'm disgusted that we're negotiating life like this. Um, politics is, it, is, is just gone too far. Um, and, and, and yet that is, that is where we are in Tallahassee but, at the moment. But it, there's a lot that people don't know because they're not there. So they don't see the conversations that we have on the sidelines, the, the, you know, um, the private meetings I've had, and I've crossed party lines daily. And, and Brett Woodson, please confirm that because you and I have spent some time and, and this is a yes. really important issue. And I, I'm, I'm going to do what I think is best to represent my district in this and to make sure that I expose the people that are willing to work together and those that are not willing to work together. Rep Woodson, you had, you had something to say. Yes, Glenna, and I would say Rep Basabi and I, we had several conversations about this bill actually. When it comes to restricting women's right to make decisions for their own self, I have a major issue for that. We have women have so much more to deal with. And one thing that I'm about, we when we say choice, we need to mean choice. A woman has to decide what best for her. It's a decision between her, her husband, or her partner, her doctors, or her family we should not interfere in that conversation at all. And this is where I stand, this is what I said, and we can try to come together to have some exceptions in the bill, but the whole thing is about giving women the right to make decisions for themselves. If we're talking about choice, let them have the choice that they see fit, especially in, in a subject that is so important, that is so crit critical. No woman would want to be faced in such uh, with a situation as such. Fabian, uh, Rep. Asabe, there, there is, um, it, this bill is coming to you with a new name, uh, the Heartbeat Protection Bill. There are your colleagues who very much believe that there is a heartbeat at six weeks in a fetus. Science, uh, science says otherwise, that science calls it an electronic blip. Uh, what do you believe? 
I believe in respect for life. I believe that if you don't believe in choices for people that you don't agree with, that you don't believe in freedom, I am I am really taking this issue so deep to heart. Um, I'm, I'm not happy with where we're at. So you're I'm undecided. Not, is it correct to say you are undecided at the moment? I am. I am still. I am still weighing my thoughts on this, and I will make a statement on the House floor. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about the education bill that's coming up. This is an expansion for just to bring everyone up to speed. This is an expansion of the parental rights bill from last session, now law. Uh, this is the one opponents call don't say gay. A lot of people know it that way. But in essence, what it does, it's expanding the sex education guidelines to eighth graders. It also addresses what pronouns a teacher can use with students. And it gives parents more of a specified process to challenge books. And before I ask you on your vote, I want you just to listen to, in the House this week, Michelle Rayner Goolsby, Democrat from St. Petersburg, a little piece of her floor speech to her constituents. When alienating parents and children who have LGBTQ families, who, by the way, we all serve, in this house. When one of my colleagues, Rep Nixon, was crying out for her child, her pleas fell on deaf ears. Her rights as a parent are not even taken into consideration in this bill. And in fact, there was laughter from the front rows as she was crying out for her child. Members, I would submit to you, you can never fully prepare for your life being dismissed. So this did pass the House, 77 to 35. You both voted with your parties. Fabian Basabe, you represent your constituency, one of the largest LGBTQ communities in Florida, and you voted for the bill. That was a, a very fine line for you. Explain that. Well, I think it's important to mention that the original bill had some lines that I was not comfortable with. Um, while I did my homework and I understood where they got that language, they were basically mimicking language from the Miami-Dade School Board memos. Um, lines 97 to 101 worse gave interpretation to be targeting of a community that I support and that I love and that I live among. And um, I rewrote those lines. Those lines do not exist anymore. I worked a lot with the sponsor of this bill to make sure that this bill represents exactly what it's meant to do, which is to keep the focus on our education of the classroom at hand, improve our literacy rates. This does not, this bill does not tell people that they cannot be humans and have the important discussions that are necessary. What it does do is it let people know that if you don't feel that you are qualified, you may have the option to not discuss this at those times. At the same time, I'd like to bring a lot of resources back because I don't think that we have people that are equipped to handle people that are struggling with identity issues. I wanna know that we have uh, counselors with a master's in child psychology, a master's in early child development available in our communities. We don't have that right now. And I'm gonna work very hard to make that happen. We have people that are struggling and the misinterpretation of this bill is dangerous. The suicide rates in our youth right now in the last few years are, are rivaled with numbers from the Great Depression. This is not okay. The disinformation is hurting our children. There has it's been a lot of Rep Woodson, there's been a lot of a lot of criticism, just like uh, Rep Basabe is is saying that there is just disinformation about this bill. This is not a don't say gay that never says that in the bill. W what's your opposition to it? Thank you, Glenna. Let, let's unpack this bill. Let's just unpack it a little bit, Glenna. This bill is about a child who want to use a pronoun and cannot use that pronoun, or the teacher cannot use the pronoun as requested by the child. An example, if I want to be called, if I'm a teacher, I want to be called Mrs. Woodson in the classroom. A child, of course, going to call me Mrs. Woodson. So what's the difference with a child requesting to use her pronoun? or the parent come in to request that. We have to respect children, just like we ask children to respect us, and we have to respect parents well as well. As far as teachers being in the classrooms, right? Teachers are in there to teach. Teachers went to school to teach. For us to tell teachers what they can use, what they cannot use, what they can say, what they cannot say, come on, that's the will, that's what's in the bill. 
That's the what a lot of people are talking about, the chilling effect. I know I, I see um, there's going to be more, but I have to take a very quick break. So in a couple of minutes, we will come back and pick this up again. Stay tuned. We are back with South Florida lawmakers, South Florida representatives Fabian Basabe, Republican from the coastal communities, and Rep. Marie Woodson, Democrat from Southwest Broward. We, uh, I'd rather go deep than go wide, so I want to stick for the last couple of minutes we have together with this education bill. Uh, Marie Woodson, you were saying um, you're hearing the fears of people who are in the education system who might have a chilling effect, but Rep. Basabe, Fabian Basabe, what is the practical effects of this bill do you think this will have? Are the fears well-founded or, or misplaced or somewhere in between? They are not well-founded. We have a responsibility as adults to interpret these laws in the best interest of our children and our communities, period. These advocacy groups that are misinterpreting these for political agendas all get federal grants. This is a business for everybody, and they need to be held liable because they're hurting our children. Uh, explain this that, if you would. What, 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 um, what grants to what organizations? What do you mean by that? Uh, you have organizations like uh, Equality Florida, Save. A lot of these people, have, you know, the, the boards are consistently of rich white men, but they all tap into federal grant money for each letter of the alphabet, alphabet that they market. So you notice they keep adding letters to that. But that's besides the point. They, they have a responsibility to our community to do what's in the best interest of protecting our children and giving them the resources they need. These investments, instead of on these campaigns and disinformation, these resources need to be applied to what will make these children get the help that they need for the struggles that they're facing today. There is actually in this bill, bill there, um, there is actually money for those things. Rep. Woodson, what, what do you the think? Money that, never goes where it's Lena, supposed to. If I may add that the original bill was very, very confusing and vague. Everybody's yes. interpreting certain things in the bill differently, which create a lot of confusion for, for the teachers. Ourselves as legislators, we had some questions, and the questions were, were not answered properly for everybody to get a clear understanding of what needs to be done. By, we, by whom? Who, do you, who did not answer those questions? The bill sponsors? The bill sponsors. Some of the questions, the answers were very, very vague, which create a lot of confusions. If we as legislators are confused, what do we expect the people out there to do? Teachers are confused about what they need to do. Some areas, they're removing books, they're removing t stick stickers that used to tell kids that they are safe in the school that they are in. So it's creating a lot, the bill is creating a lot of confusion. And you know who's paying the consequences? Our kids are paying the consequences. And also the parents who feel that they are disrespected. I have parents reaching out to me, to my district, telling me how disrespectful this is because this is their kids and they think their kids their kids are feeling like they are refugees in their own country by the way they feel like their kids are being treated now i am from you know i am from haiti i know what it feels like to feel like you don't belong and this is what this bill is doing to a lot of our kids making them feel that they don't belong and this is not what we should be in the business of, of doing. I got elected to help people, to make sure that I can stand up for the people and help them to get better, to do better, not for them to feel worse than before I was in office. So we, all of us as legislators, this is what we should be doing, not creating more confusion, not making what, it worse for You and I rarely disagree on, we rarely disagree. And I really, I really cherish our friendship. Like I said before, the interpretation of the adults, we have a responsibility to interpret in the best interest of our children. This bill, and I've spent time with the sponsor, it does not say that pronouns cannot be addressed on campus. It says that if you're not comfortable or understanding how, you also may not. We need to put the focus back on education. Actually, let me, let me just uh, clarify something. What the bill says about pronouns is teachers may not use pronouns the pronouns of student choice. Teachers must they, use pronouns of birth gender. That, that's that's what's in the bill. This is an issue that drives me crazy in legislation. This stuff is like Shakespearean English. It's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. that's Welcome to the legislature. <laughs> right. But may not, not must not. It does not say must not. It says may not. And that is to alleviate people who may not understand. Because so isn't that, let me just, to, to your point, isn't, isn't this kind of vagary and isn't this kind of 
sort of vague language and, and language difficult to interpret or kind of subjective. Isn't this the whole issue with this particular bill, however good or bad it may be? It's the issue with a lot of our legislation right now, which has given birth to, to this theater where both sides have grown so big, they don't even need to work across the aisles anymore. They can just sell tickets to their prospective theaters and, and stay in business. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to work together. I'm trying to get this correct messaging around. I've made some great friendships up there. We've, we're getting a lot done. You know, 97% of the stuff that gets passed up there is passed with the, you know, uncontested support from I, I just want to um, amplify that and it's true and on news programs in this program we hash out those that are the differences but there are very 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 many bills and I know Marie Woodson you have dozens of them who are actually going through in a bipartisan way and um, and I appreciate this bipartisan kind of conversation this morning I know it goes quick and you will both be back I hope thanks so yeah, much and I support my people colleague Lena. I work with love. them whenever we can work together and we all trying our best to do that but there are certain pieces of legislation that we cannot we have we try our best to do it but we have to Understood. come together that that's yeah. where we come in understood all right happy easter to you both happy easter thank you for giving thank us thank you so time. much thank Lena. You. happy easter to you and I your family as well thank thanks. you so much happy easter Wabasabi. see you tomorrow <laughs> see you bye bye thanks